So, good morning, I want to say. <laughs> good morning, <laughs> good Anna. Good morning, Ingmar. Um, this is our, finally our first podcast about the Magnolia Retreat and about you building this um, Magic Truffle Retreat. Together with my wife. Together with your wife. And also ketamine. And ketamine retreat yeah. too. So yeah. you could say Magnolia is a truffle and ketamine retreat in the Netherlands. Yeah, and I always, for some reason, have difficulties with the word retreat. Yeah. Um, because we give you a program. You don't spend the night here. Um, mm -hmm. It's all individualized. Mm -hmm. the retreat to me also has maybe sometimes a sense that it's with more people. So it's one-on-one -on -one specific programs um, for psilocybin containing truffles and for ketamine. So let's start with the idea who like let's say who did you have in mind when you wanted to create this i mean that that retreat this place where people can have these experiences yeah that's a great question i mean we it wasn't that i knew i was going to do this together with my wife since i mm -hmm. was a kid right i'm very interested <laughs> into psychedelics since i was young mm -hmm. um, and i was very into consciousness but i myself for the last, I think, 12 years have been working with psychedelics from a more therapeutical point of view. So being facilitated myself and helping to get over my own traumas and issues, blah, blah. And the opportunity came to look into this field more seriously. And then, of course, you think about yourself a little bit and my wife, you know, what we experienced with uh, psychedelics and what it gave to us. So that's kind of the first thing you think, oh, there must be more people like us that might have benefit of this. But my wife is a physician um, and, you know, she also is in contact with a lot of patients. And, you know, there's also a lot of knowledge and science about, um, you know, what the mind does that influences the body and diseases, mm -hmm. etc. cetera, right? Um, so, um, yeah, the, the people that we have in mind are just whoever really is stuck with something or has a specific issue that they want to look into and they can't cognitively get over it um, or into it, yeah, then maybe a psychedelic experience and a specific program might work for them. Um, and for the truffle contain or the sort of simon containing truffles, we do with a medical team around the person and the non-medical team around them so people can choose. Um, and for the ketamine, it's really, this is really... Um, a whole medical environment. So we have the permits to be a specialized mental health care institution. You work with psychiatrists and psychologists that are trained to do this. So that's a little bit different. Um, you really need to have a referral from your psychiatrist or a therapist to, to, to come here and get a program. So for, I mean, I think a lot of people now have heard about magic mushrooms, magic yeah. truffles. So before we get into the journey that led to Magnolia, What, what would you say is the difference between a ketamine experience and a magic mushroom experience, yeah. a magic truffle? Yeah, I sure. I mean, in the Netherlands, it's legal, as most people yeah. will probably know, and, but only the truffles are legal. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to be very mindful that I say continuously psilocybin-containing mm -hmm. truffles, because if I talk about psilocybin, that's not allowed. Yeah. Right? It's about the truffles. I'll just call it truffles from now on. Um, and the question was, what's the difference between the two? Yeah, what, what, how, if somebody would ask you, What's the difference between a ketamine journey? Yeah. And a, because most yeah. people, I think, now start to read up about psychedelics yeah. and then they almost end up feeling, well, this is one experience yeah. Yeah. one would have. No, that's, yeah, I mean, we are very much a believer in the work of Stan Graf. Um, mm -hmm. And we we'll, might talk about that more. I know you know a lot about that as well. And so what Stan Graf also says, you, whatever psychedelic you use, you get into a certain field. Uh, and that field can be your, is your own subconscious unconsciousness where a lot of things happen. So we believe that the field that you enter is the same, but the way you get into the field and the experiences of the field are different, right? And so for ketamine, what we do is intramuscular injection. Um, and you get very quickly into the journey and it lasts only about 45 minutes to an hour and then you get out of it again. And the, the beauty or, and we don't know exactly how, how that works, Uh, is that it has a very strong antidepressant effect. So if you have, uh, you know, maybe a severe depression, uh, therapy-resistant depression, then ketamine could be, you know, working for you if you agree with a therapist, etc. And for truffles, 
it's much longer, right? And you know this, and it, it goes with flows, uh, and it takes anywhere between four and seven hours. Um, so that's really different there. You really have also the time when you get back into normal reality to kind of integrate everything that you experienced. And with ketamine, it goes a lot faster, quicker, condenser, but with a strong antidepressant effect as well. So, I mean, let's quickly come back to this idea around retreats, which is the, yeah. the form that is on offer right now, mostly in, in the, I mean, all over the world, not only in the Netherlands. And the reason is always like people would recommend the retreats because it's a community, because you're yeah. there with other people, yeah. which can be amazing. Absolutely. But there's also sometimes an aspect to it that kind of takes away your individual decisions or like you're exposed to other sometimes energies that yeah. are not yours and you take them on and you yeah. don't know, is this me now feeling yeah. very bad or was it because I was in a room with yeah. 20 people who <laughs> felt yeah. really bad? Yeah which I actually had once as an experience, and it took me a while to figure this out, that a, while I actually had a very good trip, I was taking on other things. So yeah. in what way do you think, let's say, this rather one-on-one -on -one experience that you can also mix with a group experience yeah. is more like the, let's call it for now, the future of treatment because you take on more, you, you, you're more responsible for yourself also. Yeah, I mean, I, we, they have both a reason for existence, yeah. I think, and they can live next to each other very nicely. But our philosophy is very much that every client or patient, every person has this own self-healing intelligence ability in themselves. Mm -hmm. And you can activate that. And you, know, it acti you can activate it normally when you just take a pill from a doctor and you think it's going to work at the placebo effect and you heal yourself, right? Um, so that you have this innate ability to do so is clear. The question is, how do you activate it? And we believe that if you really focus on the individual itself, you really have very intense preparatory discussions with them about what are the intentions, the issues, and the client or patient decides that all themselves. We don't, we don't kind of steer them in any direction. And with those intentions, that's the client's own, they then go into a journey where we also don't steer anything. There's no ceremony or you know, certain things that you might see at a retreat with feathers or something like that, which is all fine, but we don't do that here. And you put your eye mask on and your headphones. It's all you and everything you experience is you. And you come out of that journey knowing that it was all you. And the fact that you can, you're so open in a journey, right? You're so open and you can really feel and are so much extra sensitive that indeed, if you're in a group setting, you can feel other energy. You can, yeah. Absolutely, 100%. it's counter-transference. And you know, it's, 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 you know, it's well-documented psychiatrists and psychologists learn about it in their education. So here, we really make sure that that's almost impossible. The therapists that facilitate these people are really trained to also not think themselves also about intense things, right? So that nothing comes from that way back and forth. And then our philosophy and our approach is then that after this journey and when you start talking to the people about their experiences, we also don't steer them in any way. We just probe them, ask questions. What did you feel? Did it resonate? How did it come back to your intentions? What is it that it does to you? They then have their own complete, 100% their story. And it's their own experience. And it's their own, you know, their own strength that activated their own new view on the world, or they created their own narrative, or their own conditionings that were making them not strong, or, you know, or trauma, or whatever it is. They did it themselves. Mm. So that gives them a very big sense of empowerment. Uh, and that's our goal. We don't want them to come back. You know, to, yeah, it's not a well, good business six model. Months, maybe. I know, yeah. <laughs> so ideally, we just want them, you know, to be, you know, on this journey then to really be in touch with themselves. And of course, if they need to come back, then you know, but ideally not, mm -hmm. to be very frank. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So that's how we do it. So I mean, in the meantime, we've seen in a couple of, I mean, on YouTube or on, on TV shows like the Goop Lab. And, a couple of years ago was the first team trip shown um, in, in, I think, Costa Rica with mushrooms. So I would say in the meantime, there's kind of a narrative, a new narrative also that we can see and that is developing, kind of replacing the old narrative of the crazy making narrative slowly but surely. Um, but still, 
like every narrative, there will be cliches and kind of things that are not yeah. true or like have their problem to it. So in this new narrative that we're seeing now, triggered by Michael Pollan and yeah. like we said earlier, what to you is the biggest cliche that if you see something about psychedelics in the media, where you say like, oh my God, this thing is now becoming the next wrong narrative. Ah, yeah, I don't know. To be, I don't really follow the media that much, but you hear, of course, still there's, there's an idea that it's dangerous and that you can have bad trips and that you can get into some mm -hmm. kind of psychosis, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's still there. And I think that's really almost impossible to mm -hmm. be very frank, mm -hmm. uh, how we do it, right? We, we screen you very diligently. You're so much well-prepared. You're you know, in the right set and setting here with, with the guidance, and after that, you have the aftercare. So, I mean, you never can say 100% safe, but the fact that that would happen is, in the way that we approach it with our own protocols, it's just very difficult. I think it's almost impossible. Yeah. And the bad trip usually happens because people are doing it in the wrong environment, or they took too much, or they were not in the right state of mind, whatever, right? Or they shouldn't have done it because they already had psychosis before. So that's something, but I also see it that um, it's sometimes being positioned as it's, oh, it's the, it's the new cure to everything, um, which is obviously also not the case, right? It's not yeah. the cure to everything. Um, it can help you really rewrite your own narrative. And you know, the way you look at reality, yeah, that, 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 the, that decides if do you look at it as a fearful environment or a loving environment. And that has influence on your body, on your state of mind, on everything. And mm -hmm. the question is, how did you get into this narrative of yourself? What were the conditionings, trigger points that made you think that environment is like that? Well, the psychedelics can help you reassess that and even change it and make the external environment not a fearful place, but actually a place where you can have trust. And, you know, of course, for everybody, it's a different journey. You never know what you're going to get. But that has, the psychedelics have the opportunity to do that. That doesn't mean that if you've taken that journey, that it's then automatically like that, right? Mm -hmm. That's when the work starts for a lot of people, right? Then you suddenly come back to your old environment and you think, oh my God, I know. And so you have to then work on keeping that new narrative alive and really integrating it into your body and into your system. So it's, that's also a little bit of a cliche that it can cure everything. And the last thing that you now see is who owns this space? Yeah. Are the medical professionals or are it the more facilitators that have been doing this for maybe decades, years, or even centuries, like you know, in the more native uh, cultures? Who owns this space? And obviously nobody owns it. And what yeah. we've really tried to do at Magnolia is to bring those two together. So of course we have psychiatrists, medical doctors, et cetera, here with their protocols, but we also have facilitators that just have journeyed themselves a lot, have their certification somewhere, because there's so many courses now out there that are very credible. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, we believe in the inner healing intelligence, but when you talk to a doctor very often, they look at you and they think, you know, what are you talking about? You really need to explain that. And the fact that there is a field that you can enter and that you can see things of your own life, you know, in, you know, from your own subconscious, unconscious realm that can actually help you in your daily life is for many people still, abracadabra. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. Uh, and even for psychiatrists, you know, because you still mm -hmm. see in hospitals, people getting ketamine IV treatments just in a room. They don't get really prepared, not really integration. They just use it as a drug to treat symptoms. Whereas we see it as an opportunity to really activate your own inner healing ability again. Um, so we really do that a little bit different, but still based on very sound medical, rational studies and outcomes. So we're not here uh, playing around or anything. Okay. So, um, but before we get into this, um, so we were talking about this before that through us, a certain full disclosure, we're sending people to you. I mean, I think we, we can say this also. Oh yeah, at least introduce them yeah. to us and you see if they, if they want to, to you know. But I mean, anything. yeah, but I mean, it's, it seems to me an interesting collaboration because it seems that the people that come to us asking for a recommendation for somewhere to go to have a safe experience are often people that seem to resonate with the way you have a conversation with them, meaning that they mostly have had maybe even a couple of careers. Yeah. They had 
families, children, not always, but most of them had like what you basically all should accomplish in your life according to our society. And then at one point, and that point of course was for a lot of people COVID, yep. but I think it was there a little bit before, has been that they were reconsidering a lot of life decisions or I want to say almost like questioning their life path. Yeah. Triggered again through COVID yeah. because they it brought us all to the to the edge yeah. <laughs> of certain things. So, and um, I find it very interesting that there seems to be a whole new, let's say, group between 40 and 50, roughly, maybe even mid 50s, who really now is emerging. Uh, immer sorry, immersing themselves into psychedelics. Yeah. There's a group that's of much younger age, yeah. but then there's, let's say, a group after 40, 45. Yeah. So, and I find this super interesting because it means really like one of the biggest changes in society that a group that is basically also in power or in a C-level yeah. or in a leadership position right yeah. now is eventually... <laughs> yeah changing their whole um, idea about what is required from them as yeah. grown-ups, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So can you talk to, to these kind of clients coming to you? Because it's fascinating. Yeah, me. and I mean, and you say that we resonate with them, but it's because they obviously resonate with you first. And you, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're, and you're very yeah. credible, and you, you know, the way you look at psychedelics, also in a very mature and, you know, yeah, very solid way. And, so, and fun too. Right? Yeah, of course, but also, you know, for, for your own healing purposes, yeah, of course, right? Yeah. 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 And so that, and then they come to us. And I mean, I'm 50, almost 50 myself, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so I understand uh, very often. I've also been in business and, you know, been around the world, lived in different places. Yeah, and no. so I understand the challenges that people have. And the beauty of psychedelics is that they, that yeah, it will tell you what you need to know. And the beauty of it is that whatever comes up in this journey is that item that needs to be processed in the conscious field of the person itself. And they have their own in our radar. So we as facilitators don't even need to do anything. They do it themselves. They, they decide what comes up. It's their own subconscious feeling. And the fact that you can then see people then suddenly think differently about their life, their job, their career, their family, their relationships, money, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, yeah, you can have very nice conversations about that when you're integrating uh, the experiences of the medicine. So very often uh, you see people really coming out after their integration talks with a new narrative for themselves and a new way they want to now look at life. Um, and it's always a more profound way of looking at life. It's always a, a more interconnected way mm -hmm. of life with nature and other mm -hmm. people. And it's always with less materialism, more honest, pure intention style thinking. And also very, we just recently had a very successful entrepreneur here as well, who just literally um, now knows that he was asking the medicine himself, like, how should I, um, react to a certain person with one of his business partners. Ah, interesting. And, yeah, and the medicine just gave it, and of course, in a little bit conveyed message back, like, yeah, but hold on, what's your intention with this business person? Because he then realized my intention that I have with this person, of course, influences the way that person looks at me. Mm, very and clever. So, yeah, yeah, so, right, so then he realized, ah, right, man, it's all interconnected, and so whatever I do has an effect on him, and then blah, blah, and blah you get the point. Um, so it's amazing that um, yeah, that these people now are open to do this. I'm I'm always very grateful, and I find it very courageous that people are doing this because for very often people it's the first time, and we give a, a high dose of uh, truffles. Of course, it's a safe high dose, as in the clinical trials that Roland Griffiths did. Uh, but still, it's it's a high dose. And, How uh, much is it? Uh, yeah. It's anywhere between thirty and forty grams yeah, okay. of truffles. Mm -hmm. Um, and we do it in ginger tea, so you don't have mm -hmm. stomach problems or mm -hmm. vomiting problems. And so it's, it's very intense. Um, so, I'm, yeah, it's very courageous. And the fact that you know these people and that they're open to this, I think it's fantastic. And what they then do with it, and, you know, I, we always hope, of course, that uh, the more people that come here that have a lot of, I would say between brackets, power or influence, that they can, you know, give the world a bit of a push sure, into yeah. a more nicer direction instead of just polarizing each other 
for yeah. ages. Yeah. And the, the second thing I observed is, and I mean, there, there are more podcasts around this topic now. There was just one on, on the Stephen Bartlett show, The Diary of a CEO, with this psychiatrist um, again explaining how much the trauma in our bodies is influencing yes. our brains yeah, and like pretty much everything. Yeah, so bizarre. it's not like a woo-woo thing anymore. No. It, it never was, but I mean, I think because of the very legit research around yeah. in psychedelics, yeah. it's becoming now really something that people start to take very seriously. Yeah. So, and of course, another topic that, let's say that generation between starting at, at 40 something, yeah suddenly realizes, looking back at their childhood, I mean, for me yeah. it was more than, it was the biggest revelation to find out what I had experienced in childhood, how yeah. it really changed my life yes. in, in a drastic way, uh, or affected my life. So, and suddenly there's this, also this thing that people start to really look into, and obviously, as we know, in a psychedelic trip, it's just coming to you, even yeah. if you don't want to yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. It's gonna say hi at yeah. one point. Yeah. So and um, so and I wonder sometimes if that also kind of, and maybe in ten years will be addressed by pretty much everybody in a very, also very much earlier than we do it right now. Yeah, I would definitely hope so. I mean, this um, is so important. I think. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And you you say it correctly. I think the whole psychosomatic relationship, yeah. right? Gabor Mate has yeah. mentioned it many mm -hmm. times also in his last book. I think it's, it's solid. And the fact that you talk about CEOs and then are doing it. The, the funny thing is you see certain retreats that are also focusing more on like you can change your business with psychedelics. Yeah. That's not our focus. Our focus is really you can change your own inner healing ability. And if you change your own traumas or your own imprints, your conditionings, you will become a, a different person effectively, right? Because yeah. you don't have that conditioning or that narrative about yourself. So you might be able to trust more, love more, you know, uh, collaborate more, whatever it is. And that will then go into the business that you do. We don't specifically say, oh, hey, you can make your business better because of psychedelics. No, you can make yourself better. And that's the only thing we focus on. And then the effect will be that you will, of course, make different decisions in your business mm. making. Um, but we don't use the psychedelic journey for that. It's really only about themselves. Um, and I hope for sure that younger people also take this because the earlier you are with the reflection on your youth, yeah, the better, right? Because it just adds up. You just pile up stuff on this trauma or whatever it is that you have and not necessarily always for the better. And um, it's just amazing if you also think about that the ages from zero to seven is when you really mm -hmm. create the kind of hard drive yeah. of your unconscious system, which drives 95% of your behavior exactly. later. Now in these first seven years, you don't know what happened, right? Mm -hmm. You did, yeah, I mean, at least Barely, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And you believe everything because you're in these theta brainwaves as they call them. Um, so yeah, you don't know what environment, what people told you, but you believe everything. And then if it was not too nice or it were uh, kind of effects that didn't make you a stronger or better or, or lover, loving person, yeah, then you grow old and you have no idea. And then psychedelics give you that opportunity to go back to those ages in many different uh, visualizations or uh, feelings or whatever. And, and I hope that people realize that this is really true, right? I mean, you can also look at that Venus Serena Williams uh, picture yeah, where you yeah. see their father having this manual for the kids before they were even born. And he just told them in their first seven years or, you know, forever, you are going to be the first one that's going to win well, but yeah. then you're going to do this, 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 this. And look at them. King Richard, the movie. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And there are so many examples that I'm not all going to mention that you just see this one on one. Uh, but those are the positive examples, right? Or at least, you know, uh, somewhat positive. I don't know. Yeah. They have oh, to decide right. themselves. Um, yeah. Sure. But if your parents were very stressful and they, you know, they drank a lot, they were maybe a little bit aggressive and you had this the whole first seven years, you don't feel very safe, right? And then you grow up as a not feeling very safe person. Exactly. And how are you going to fix that by just talking cognitively with your therapist? You don't know where you're going to, you don't know where it comes from and you can't do it with your brain. So then psychedelics as a tool are just, I, th I think really, really a opportunity for people. So I hope they do it. I mean, there was this, uh, is this study um, 
in, did, in this case with MDMA um, from this Turkish researcher who's now I think in Berkeley and um, showing that uh, the, the so-called critical period in your puberty can yep. be kind of reopened yep. to redefine yep. or to re-remember things exactly. differently. And exactly. I mean, I have to say, this is the, exactly the ex experience I had in my first MDMA session. Okay. And it is so transformational yep. that, you, like you say, you would never, and I did, I think, like 15 years of talk therapy. Yeah. I don't think no. anything could hardly touch on no. what I experienced no. in there. Oh, no, exactly. So, but let's come back to Ingmar. Yeah, but just <laughs> one thing about that whole MDMA thing. So, I, so yeah. yes, but really just have the right guides or facilitators, No, of right? course, and it was with a facilitator. Yeah, exactly. For because sure. just doing it at home know. and thinking you're going to be... It's uh, different. It's different, and I'm not talking for just my own business, because that, well, that's fine, whatever. Um, it's just really, it, you have to do it in a certain way, right? And just read the books of Stan Graf to know how, uh, but then you, uh, you get I mean, that. I think like, I mean, we can talk about Stan Graf, of course, too, but um, I think it's really like, there are so many protocols, and we know that in, in August, probably this year, MAPS will, and, yeah. and Lycos will be able to bring this forward yeah. to legalization but it is it is such a precise and very tangible effect it, it yeah. can have on you but before we come to and maybe Stan that's Graf, even too much <laughs> uh, i don't know because that's again the medical versus the spiritual I thing do you need to have it in hundred thousand protocols to work or can it be a little bit less i don't know but that's the discussion that people are having now no no yeah. for sure but i mean so how did you get into this world of psychedelics or how did it come to you maybe I mean you live in the Netherlands you're yeah surrounded by yeah another opportunity that you know yeah and then people who live in a country most countries where everything is completely illegal yeah so I mean I know you wanted to ask this question I always find it a little bit less relevant but because it's not about me it's about I the find people it relevant. here but um, <laughs> yeah so as a kid I, I always moved around abroad then at 17, I was able to do my senior year in the US, and that's when I first encountered LSD and on many occasions there. Um, but that was more in a recreational party mm -hmm. scene, but I was already fascinated by it. And before that, when I was, I don't know, 9, 10, 11, 12, I was already reading the New Testament, but putting it you under were. my bed so that nobody <laughs> knew because they thought I was a nerd. So this whole religious, <laughs> spiritual consciousness thing, I mean, I, I, I've been not mad, but somewhat mad about that. I never could figure out what is behind this reality, right? Because there has to be something. It and I knew when I was yeah. dreaming and then I woke up and I, I could not get it. So I, my parents brought me to, to church, more the Christian side, but that didn't fly for me. Then mm -hmm. I went into the whole Buddhism thing also with my mother, went to Bhutan. And that mm -hmm. was already a little bit more for me. That I thought, okay, this mm -hmm. makes more sense because it's a little bit more individualized meditation and blah, blah, blah. But still, I didn't, I couldn't grasp it. And then... At some point, um, yeah, then I had an experience with DMT that you smoke. And that's when suddenly all these questions that I always had kind of just fell into place uh, in, in answers. At least that you could surrender and say, oh, okay, all right, so this is what it is. And I, you can't explain it, right? These are ineffable experiences. But at least that helped me. And that's when I took the journey into, okay, I need, I need more therapy and psychedelics. Before that, I had therapy. I just talked mm -hmm. and talked and talked. Mm -hmm. But as I, you know, you said, yeah. at some point, you just you don't get there. And so psychedelics really helped me to get into those places that I had no idea, um, you know, that they were there. And of course, everybody has their own childhood traumas and stuff. And I was traveling as a kid, always, and I became a professional. Also, traveled and worked in Asia, Japan, Singapore, Brussels, wherever. But always with somewhat of an unrest. Mm -hmm. in there and not being able to completely connect and always just thinking that you need to adapt to your environment and not being completely yourself and yeah so uh, man, many relationships probably failed because of certain elements of that uh, but then psychedelics really gave me insight into these deeper things and then I just went to all of them and checked them out in a very professional way so my last encounter with, with Iboga in Mexico with a, with a professional medical team ar around that to really, you know, also prepare you and integrate that into the experience where they also do 5-MeO-DMT. And I've, and I've been before that with my wife to a Shipibo uh, guide, just one-on-one, -on -one, the two of us for a whole week to really experience this. So we've done a lot of work to really 
understand the field a little bit, uh, what it can do for, for us. And then this opportunity came uh, to say, hey, Ingmar, wouldn't you want to check out what ketamine does in the US? They have all these clinics. And I went over mm -hmm. there. I took uh, two treatments, ketamine IM, high dose, uh, and I was amazed by what that, you know, what, the, what that medicine did. But I also experienced some things that I thought, okay, set and setting and the way you're guided and facilitated also is very, very important. Yeah. And so with all that knowledge and then diving for two and a half years, because I sold my apartment in Amsterdam in the high, and I was able to just focus for two and a half, three years full time on this organizing this center, making mm -hmm. it fully legit with all the things you need from government, you know, reading everything that's possible about integration, if it's you know, from Aixala or it's from the, you know, the, the lady that talks about caring. I know, I read it all. And Stan Graf was the one that really resonated the most. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the philosophy that we then you know, created for, for Magnolia together with my wife. And then we looked for investors and we have a few investors, but they're all uh, people that have experienced the medicine themselves that have been able to see the healing power of psychedelics. So they believe in that field and they were so kind and generous to, you know, give us this opportunity to start it. And now, now we started just recently, right? It's uh, January. Yeah. End of January, we really opened and we're ready. So, um, now the proof is in the pudding. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, the, there were also companies like Field Trip in Amsterdam that didn't succeed or Synthesis mm. or there are enough examples, right? And so we really also looked at those examples and try to not make the same mistakes. And for us, and that's, I cannot uh, say this more than enough, is this field that you enter, your own unconscious, subconscious field. And I mean, the Hindus called it Brahman. Um, and, you know, these scientists call it the quantum unified field, the shamans call it the uh, true spirit, whatever it is. It's, I think it's all the same. But for us, it's a kind of a holy field. It's yeah. not something you make money off, right? Uh, and think, oh, I'm going to get very rich by getting people. So we, we, of course, need to live and we need to, you know, um, be able to keep everything running. Um, but so profit is not our foremost incentive. And that's why the prices that we have are a lot less than other organizations that have done it one on one. Um, and yeah, this is our dream come true. And we started it and it's only phase one because the second phase is that my wife, who is a physician, uh, will look at more of the also the, the somatic body mm -hmm. therapies. Um, and then in the end, our dream is that it becomes one holistic I don't like the word, but a holistic no, health a, center yeah, kind of, yeah. where you come in and you can either access the mind, psychosomatic maybe issues or body issues, or you do them both, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and those treatments in the second phase are the treatments that you see uh, that will be, be done in clinics in Switzerland, uh, but not really in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. but have proven to be very effective. Um, so that's the full dream, but we're here now psychedelics and we got ketamine and we have the truffles. We're waiting for MDMA. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I hope that somebody makes Iboga also legal at some point. Well, I think uh, MAPS took on Iboga as the next okay, good. substance yeah. to pursue. But I mean, let's quickly, before we forget it, like what is fascinating to you about Stan Graf? I mean, he obviously was the first, one of the first legit people bringing psychedelics into like, LSD into psychiatry. So, yeah. but. So his, let's say, legacy is still one of the strongest for Rick Doblin and all of these other yeah. already legends. Yeah. So what, what made, it, made him interesting for you? Yeah, I mean, I find that he is so frank and open about the fact what the role of a psychiatrist or a trained psychologist is in facilitating journeys. He really says it's not so relevant. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it's relevant maybe when you start your therapy sessions again in the normal conscious yeah. experience, but for specifically being in an altered state of consciousness or a non-ordinary state of consciousness, whatever you want to call it, there are other things that are very important. And he just is able to really characterize them very nicely. And he's very clear in what kind of elements you can encounter in your journey and what some of them mean. Absolutely. They go beyond rational understanding, but they still heal you. Others are, you know, biographical or perinatal or transpersonal. And just the fact how he looks at that and that he, puts in the center always the patient or the client itself with their own inner healing ability 
that, and focus only on that and put the, ra the rest around that, I mean, to me, that is so empowering uh, for the individual itself. And he, as a psychiatrist and a professor, able to have seen more than 5,000, I think he facilitated more than 5,000 people mm -hmm. uh, with psychedelics. Yeah, to me, it's, it, and it's a no-brainer. And it's also been my experience, uh, how we, uh, how, how the best facilitation I've experienced and other people have experienced to my, to my idea are. So don't use too much ritual or ceremonial things. It's our personal opinion. I'm not saying they shouldn't be doing because what we often get as feedback is that if somebody is doing a lot of ritual and ceremonial things and then the experience comes, the person sometimes maybe even unconsciously thinks that that other person is very important for their own innate healing, healing ability. Mm. Okay, yeah. And I don't think that's the case. Mm. I think everybody can do that themselves. But, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and so, yeah, uh, we, of course, open when somebody has a psilocybin or a containing truffle journey, we open this kind of with the gong that at least you now we start and we, we close it because it's nice to have a beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. but, but, but that's it. And for the rest, it's really just only the patient or the client. Itself. I mean, so that's, that's quite a big topic also in this new emerging field, like how let's say spiritual, let's call it for now, a journey or a place or a set and setting should be. Yeah. And then what does that actually mean these days, spiritual? Is it like an appropriated taking away from symbols yeah. that you put together in your own yeah. <laughs> combination where it never would be in a combination coming yeah. from, from the origin? Then again, like I hear from some, I heard from some therapists that let's say they have clients who would like to have Britney Spears and Manchester United on the wall because this is where they come from, yeah. from that world. And yeah. they want to have like the so-called yoga elephant yeah. and they would rather be, um, yeah. be very critical about the therapist if they see some yoga stuff lying around, for example. Okay. So, but at the same time, this is also saying like, well, how, how much is it related to class kind of, you know? Do you yeah. do you need like a working class environment to treat working class people? Yeah. I mean, I'm, it's like it sounds yeah. cynical, but this is what no, it, sure. what it also can mean. Yeah. So, but at the same time, we I and mean, we said this earlier that this whole th there is this really, and I, mean, I lived in California. It can be very easy. You can create like a fake, a manipulative spirituality that most people would fall for and become really like open to to join a cult yeah. because they assumingly th think that this if, if I'm just here with these people then yeah. my life will be really great yeah. so how do you manage this expectation also of people kind of wanting also a spiritual experience yeah but I mean and that's the beauty of it if somebody really wants to have a spiritual yeah. experience there's enough out there um, uh, and you know, to me, it's all about this. How do you activate your inner healing intelligence? Yeah. For some people, they need a doctor with a white coat, right? Others might need a shaman <laughs> with other certain things. Mm -hmm. other, you know, so whatever, I mean, whatever they want. What we offer is you don't need anything but yourself. That's what mm -hmm. we believe. Mm -hmm. And so how we treat it is neutral, cozy, warm, and you will only need yourself also when you leave this place you only need yourself to heal yourself and we will give you and not we you will give that to yourself that ability and so very often i would say almost i don't know it's difficult to say but maybe almost always people encounter a spiritual experience during a psilocybin uh, mm -hmm. containing truffle journey and the you know the, the difference between spirituality and religion you obviously know right religion is yeah, you hear that other people said blah 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 and uh, right it has dogmas and rules etc and spirituality is something that you just experienced yourself is In it the, well is it I, for, uh, for us that's how we look at spirituality that's how stan groff looks at spirituality right it's like when you are in this altered state of consciousness you encounter something that you know that is larger than yourself um, and that gives you meaning purpose whatever it is but you experience that and it's something beyond yourself that is spirituality and that's yours and it doesn't matter for everybody it's different but at least you got that and it doesn't have rules and things and and that's it and that's of course beautiful and there's also this famous or at least a very great psychiatrist i think his name is david hawkins that has also helped so many patients and he said the most wounded people 
for sure need spirituality to come over it. Because, yeah, you know, I even agree, if yeah. you're right, because the, why, if you're so down or whatever it is that you had so much traumas, how you, you have so, such a high rate of self-deception, yeah, you need to have self-transcendence to get over your self-deception. Yeah, and how do you get self-transcendence by experiencing something that is beyond yourself? And psychedelics can really offer you that opportunity. But, I mean, maybe meditation can also give you that opportunity or whatever, right? So, but that's not even another topic. So that's how we really view that. And so spirituality do, is in yourself. Do you feel that traumatized people, can, it's the loss of spirituality that keeps them in the trauma and that psychedelics could bring back to them? Well, you know, spirituality, you need to experience it, right? If you haven't experienced it, then it's only what other people tell you, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're religious, yeah, they, you read a book and then they say this and that and blah, blah, Yeah, but blah. that's a different religion is not yeah. spirituality. Yeah, but then video. what is the other spirituality? Then, then you heard from other people what spirituality is. Yeah. Yeah, but that's more the but thing. that's the same as with religion. You, again, you listen to other people telling them what they experience and how you should live your life. I believe that you should decide how you live your life, and you can only know how to live your life if, if yeah, if you really follow yourself and if you really know yourself. But how yeah. do you really know yourself? Because the first seven years, so much stuff happened that you get all these conditionings on conditionings. Who is your real self? Yeah. Well, that might be a lifelong journey. Uh, right? Uh, yeah, but I think also like, I mean, people getting into psychedelic treatments to examine their trauma and then leave it behind. So yeah. they often have the challenge and I mean, I had to, I still have that too, where you realize, okay, so I was this person for, let's say, a really big part of my life yeah. because I had experienced this trauma. So. Yeah. And then in trips, it can actually, the question could occur to you, yeah. okay, who are you yeah. without the trauma? Yeah. And then you come back from the trip and you're like, okay, so let's say a clean slate. So yeah. who, who is the person now? Yeah. Who am I without the trauma? And this is when you start to engage and research yeah. about yourself. Exactly. And you might come to a conclusion that you, you might have another job, you might have another... Yes. I don't know, circle of friends, like yeah. pretty much everything can yeah. change. Yeah. So, and I think this is also something that people are terrified of, if, let's say, as an outcome of a psychedelic experience. Yeah, but then you're terrified of becoming your true self. Exactly. If you're terrified of it becoming be your true self, yeah, okay, but then don't do it. Yeah. Very simple, right? Yeah. For us, it's really, especially for the people, because ketamine, our patients, is different. You need a referral therapist, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But for the truffle part, the truffle needs to call you. You need to have the, you want, you have the need to ex explore yourself. If mm -hmm. you don't have that, if yeah. there's no calling for that, yeah, then don't do it, right? Because then it makes no sense. Yeah. But usually you know you're stuck somewhere and you mm -hmm. know you're not your true self because you know that life is just too beautiful to not ex you know, experience it in a nice way. And then it makes all the sense to do this. And what the outcomes are, yeah, of course, I mean, hey, um, that's of course also where we're that ready to help uh, if that's necessary. But some people want no integration. Some people oh, yeah, want okay. a lot of integration. It just depends. Um, but that it has profound effects on your relationships, your work, your home situation, whatever. Yeah, that's crystal clear. And that's what we tell everybody and try to get them ready for. And recently you also, I mean, they're also like, there's also research around this, but you can also feel how much this has to do, these experiences, with the question around longevity or like the, okay. let's say, the, yeah. the new emerging industry. Because, yeah. I mean, there was recently another podcast talking about how trauma ages you. Yeah. And your brain obviously yeah. ages faster. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of people who've done this yeah. that report back to me, like, tell me what they experienced. Um, and, and again, including myself, I feel like they have this rejuvenating moment in their lives yeah. where they literally get rid of things that are kind of draining them. Yeah. Sometimes they get rid of it without realizing it yeah. first, or yeah. it, it, it leaves them in yeah. a way. So is there a connection you see between longevity yeah, I mean, and psychedelics like to me it's somewhat of a no-brainer 
Yeah. Um, yeah, because especially in the Western part of the world, or maybe it's not politically correct to say Western, I don't know, but at least, you know, you know what I mean? We're very cognitive. So we, yeah. we use our brain the whole time. And very often we, we lost contact with our feelings, mm -hmm. with our heart space, mm -hmm. our gut space. And if you use your brain, your cognitive energy, you know, your ability all the time, yeah, of course, it's going to wear out, right? And when you wear that out, I don't know, dementia, Alzheimer, whatever, right? That, that doesn't help you get old if that stops working, yeah. right? So if you can be more balanced and especially, you know, follow your feelings, of course, in a balanced way, not suddenly, oh, every feelings is reality, but you know, you have, you can balance that somewhat. I think that helps for sure. And the fact that, you know, we already discussed it, psychosomatic diseases, Maybe if you talk, I think this lady, Dr. Candace Pert, I don't know, this is what Gabor Mate refers to in her books. She made it so clear that maybe more than 90% of all illnesses stem from the way you look at reality yeah. and you experience yeah. stress, trauma, etc. right? So if you're always stressed, of course, your body is going to then transform that into a disease, whatever that may be. Or the other way around, like your, your stressed body will inform your brain also eventually. Sure. It's, it's completely both yeah. ways, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But very often, yeah, I mean, there are people that, you know, have trauma and they don't, they think it's all no problem. The others have something different and it's suddenly a big issue. Mm -hmm. So, you, so the, the way you view reality and that experience, I mean, that's critical and that then psychedelics, if they can help you transform that into, you know, something healthier, yet you're, you're gonna, I think, save years, right? Centuries. I don't know, but <laughs> no, centuries, I don't know. I mean, that, that, that's not my forte, but I can imagine that if you can get rid of the stress and the fear and the anxiety in your life, and you come much more from a place of love and trust versus fear and control, I think that'll make you live longer for, 100%. I think. Yeah, because yeah. you'll make different decisions also. Um, and in, in what way do you think psychedelics will, let's say, implement it in a more regular structure in our lives? I mean, we see like the rise of microdosing, people really yeah. try to find something that is, you know, not like a proper trip, but then yeah. again, of course, it has not such an impact, but still they're looking for other tools. Yeah. Again, something we saw in a pandemic yeah. more than ever to kind of work around their daily lives much yeah. better so and i mean if you talk to people who let's say have had experiences and then start to open up to this for example um you would say like well i have this one thing that i keep thinking about it keeps me in this yeah. pattern so and then you might take a little microdose and yeah. meditate half an hour or like yeah. a half a day and you just start to see other avenues opening. I mean, that's something I, I really sometimes do. And it's really interesting how it takes me away from the, from the, the fixed brain on this particular thing. Yeah. So do you think it will, yeah, there will be a, a range, besides the legality, a, a range of new products that we're expecting? that yeah. give us these opportunities? No, it's a fair point. And I was very, uh, maybe I was a little bit too articulate in the beginning of the, of the podcast that I said, you only want to see you once because I agree with you. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. you know, it's, it's not like one time <laughs> miracle trick. Yeah. And then, so I agree. And you, while you live, you also get into new things that you want to get rid of. So I agree. So how we look at it ourselves is you have low dose, of truffles, for instance, mm -hmm. that'll help you very well to get rid of certain habits. So for instance, smoking, yeah. drinking, whatever, that might help you to mm -hmm. get through that. If you take a medium dose of truffles, you can get much more easier in contact with your feeling without the big whoa, whatever, right? And, uh, and then you have the high dose to really get into your deepest traumas and then rip that out. So there are different modalities for that. And yeah, for sure, they all have a very big role to play. And in the end, I agree with you, it would be stupid to say just only one time and then never do it again. It's probably not a bad idea to just be in touch with yourself and feel oh, uh, the, the medicine is calling me again because there's something else that now I want to get, you know, look into. Um, so for sure, these other products are going to come up. And then the trick is, how do you know which one is right for you? Exactly. And everybody's going to say something else, yeah. right? And uh, our, some of our clients are also asking that. Um, and yeah, the, the answer is almost impossible. You need to be able to 
feel what resonates with you, what would work for you. But very often, if people are very cognitively oriented, they lost touch with their feeling. It's difficult for them to feel what would work for them. But in the end, that's the trick. And I think if you, after a psychedelic journey, you are, you know, your neuroplasticity is open, blah, 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 you get much more, if it all goes well, you know, more in touch with your feeling. I think you will be able to just feel what works for you and uh, just figure it out, right? Some people microdose on mescaline, some on LSD, some on, and for some it works fantastic and some don't want it at all. Um, so yeah, let's, I'm all for choice. Right? Health we'll free, see how the next choice. 10 years go and yeah. what truffles are calling us. And I just find, like, every time I think about truffles, they tell me, like, you know that we're taking you for a ride. It's not, we're not going to be <laughs> super nice to you. What the, I mean, <laughs> but it's great. I kind of like that they tell me this. But super nice. For some, so, they are very super nice, huh? No, I mean, and it's not, there are parts of the trip that are super nice, but if I, let's say, in my little spiritual you know, moment, ask myself, okay, should I do another truffle round? Yeah. Then the answer I get is like, well, you can, but you know we take you for a ride. Yeah. But I find it very interesting to have these conversations but with, that's a high with dose the truffles. Truffle ride yeah, well, of course, about. with the yeah. high dose. Yeah. Yeah. But still, I find it, like, or some people would ask me, yeah, how was it with the truffles? And then, of course, some people say, oh, it was so nice, I was in nature, blah, blah, blah. But now my answer would be, it was great, but they take you for a ride. But that's for sometimes sure. what you need also. For sure. I mean, high they dose... They have to tell you what it is. Yes. <laughs> so. I mean, if you take a high so. dose of truffles, for sure it's going to be challenging when they come up, right? When, they, when the truffles come into your system. Yeah, it's yeah. a tough ride. It is a tough and ride. And then you enter something that's longer, and that can be very lovely or also challenging. Um, and we just really help everybody in the preparatory phase to how do you react to, you know, the challenging things and the, the breathing. And but, but, but I mean, more like, I mean, I find it interesting that, I mean, that, like the physicality of things is one thing that, you know, okay, you're going to feel a little bit weird and this is going to go away, like the, yeah. a little bit nauseous, but if you breathe right, this is going to go away like very fast. But I, but I find interesting that once you had a couple of experiences that it's almost like, um, you could have a relationship with truffles to disrupt your own kind of, kind of, how can I say this? Um, yeah, to disrupt yourself once in a while, yeah. to readjust to yeah. things again. So, yeah, clean up. And then, they, yeah, and they were not saying, oh, no, come, it's so nice. Like, yeah. But you know, we take you far. Yeah, right. yeah. No, definitely. And, and I kind of like to have this relationship with the truffles. Yeah, no, definitely. But so. I agree with you. It can really, it's, it's a cleanup of your system again. And you have so many yeah. layers of trauma or at least you have so many layers of conditionings. Everybody has them. And it's maybe, an, it's, it's indeed a dreamy story to say that in one go, it'll all be gone. Definitely not. Um, and, and also like, I mean, and this is also, I have often conversations with people about this from the space, but like a lot of these, let's say you have had a couple of experiences, a lot of these very significant moments in a trip, they somehow, although they're like sometimes five to 10 years ago, they're kind of always with you in, in some moments, yeah, right? Yeah, that's interesting you say that. And that's so, I would, you may be triggered to think about ketamine. So for, yeah. for ketamine, there are different versions of ketamine, yeah. right? There is this IV. SR ketamine, no, you have SR mm -hmm. ketamine and you mm -hmm. have S ketamine, mm -hmm. right? S ketamine mm -hmm. is now also an official drug yeah. and you, it's a nasal the spray. Johnson and Johnson. Yeah, but it's pretty well documented that the RS ketamine, so not what's in the nasal spray, that has more of a mystical effect mm -hmm. to it. And then the question is, what is the added value of a mystical effect or a spiritual effect or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, the opinions differ. We really believe, as the Stangraf, that this mystical element, the self-transcendence or whatever, really is an integral part of your healing journey. Um, and that's why we use that version of ketamine, yeah. um, which has all these implications because in the Netherlands, for some odd reason, it's not registered. In all the countries around us, in the US it is, but in the Netherlands it isn't. Um, so we, of course, do that very diligently. Um, but so, yeah, this mystical experience, I don't know, how do you view that? Do you think that is important for uh Well, activating? I mean, that's, that's at the moment, it's kind of also the big question, like there will be drugs and substances that will not give you a mystical experience yeah. in the future, and there will be yeah. 
the classic trip selection yeah. where you will have one. I mean, we don't know how this is going to play out, but I feel that the mystical experience is the big part of the healing experience. Okay your personal mystical experience. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But I mean, and we talked about this, it doesn't have to be induced by plants no. necessarily, no. like so-called plant medicine. No. It can be also induced by MDMA or ketamine. And I, I mean, again, like... Or LSD. Done a, huh? or LSD. Or LSD, exactly. So, and I'm, again, like total personal experience that I had, that I had very strong mystical experience with chemicals. And yeah. I know that especially with mushrooms, it's just, yeah, if they're natural, then it's going to be different. But, I mean, I think my perception of these last four or five years is that it's such an extremely individual experience that people have. Yeah. And some have a very mystical experience yeah. with LSD yeah. or MDMA even, and um, others with maybe natural yeah. mushrooms or ayahuasca. So, but I mean... Um, I think that's kind of something that will need to go, that it's just um, a nature-related experience, and, and meaning that it can be only had in the context of a natural a product that's grown in nature. Yeah. I don't think that is um, true. In the end, you access the same field, I think. A hundred percent. And there were some wise people before, they said it doesn't really matter which psychedelic you take, if it's chemical or natural, if it's ayahuasca or iboga, which one resonates most with you and you know, that's the one that, that's fit for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no, I completely agree with that. Yeah. Great. And to just finish off, yeah. so because the ketamine part is, is very new, especially also in yeah. the Netherlands, mm -hmm. um, and we really are trying to do this as neat and precise as possible using really scientific research why you take this version or that version and I'm just fascinating to see how that this is going to pan out um, because yeah who's going to say what's right right it's, it's, yeah. it's fascinating for me to then decide what are they going to say only use this or only use that um, and that's a whole medical spiritual thing right at medical you have protocols rules laws regulations um, and they will, they can make the field very broad or they can narrow it very much. They can make it very expensive or whatever. You know, well, I mean, also, I mean, we, we definitely will see like a bunch of compounds that are created by AI, a mixture of maybe unprecedented cases where substances are mixed to maybe kind of create a certain outcome or molecules that have not been combined before. So, I mean, this is just like we're talking about now the first generation of psychedelics, basically. And, I mean, in, in 20 years, there won't be probably classic ayahuasca anymore and classic others. I mean, it will be there, but there will be many variations for maybe a very individual journey that people would like to have. As long as the outcome is that they are grounded in reality. That's the other part. And that healthy we... <laughs> without, you know, not living in some other dimension. Yeah, but um, I mean, it will be in probably, I think like the the one extreme is going into the digital and yeah. AI world and the yeah. other extreme is going to be in the nature and groundedness. It will be somewhere in between, yeah. I think. But I truly, you know, but the fact that we're so going towards AI digital and then, you know, with virtual reality glasses and yeah. et cetera, blah, blah, blah. It's nice that you have also psychedelics that can actually show you something from yourself that goes beyond yourself, but, but grounds you afterwards. Because very often during the journey, you are happy again that you are actually coming back to your normal conscious Absolutely. life, right? Yeah. That you're like, wow, yeah. it's been a journey, but now uh, yeah. I've seen a lot, but I'm happy to be here again. Uh, exactly. And in the end, we're here now in this consciousness moment on mm -hmm. planet Earth, right? So we, mm -hmm. that's what should be the focus of the healing exercise. Yeah, all the people with spiritual egos that only want to be in that other field and continue to journey to the field, fine, but that's not how we look at it, right? You use it as a therapeutic instrument to be grounded in current conscious reality. Perfect. Thank you. That's a really great <laughs> last words. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. It was awesome. so nice to be here in this fantastic Nature. And it was exactly one hour. Well exactly, done. really? Oh my God, we're so good. Well done. <laughs>